Hey everybody, this is Dust for Dust on Gaming with episode 3, match number 2 of Arclight Phoenix decks here in Modern. Previously we've played both Izzet and Teamer. This one is closer to a burn deck than some of the tempo uh, cantrip version going on with the Izzet deck. So that said, we have this kind of bridges the gap between the Arclight Phoenix deck and the burn deck, so if you like playing burn with a little bit more grindy to it, or if you like playing uh, is it with a little bit more aggressive feel to it, this deck kind of fits those mold. Um, to that end, Monastery Swiss Spear and Soulscar Mage here kind of get the early pressure on against our opponent, and then backed up by a bunch of one-mana spells. Uh, Gut Shot, Lava Spike, and Lightning Bolt kind of forcing um, the early pressure on your opponent. Um, it's very fortunate that you don't have to rely on things like Fiery Temper anymore. So with uh, Skewer the Critics and Lay Up the Stage kind of taking those kind of garbage cards away, the deck's pretty solid in terms of the spells it's casting now. They're all pretty reasonable spells on their own. Um, Gut Shot here is another free spell. Also allows you to you know take out like early mana dorks or such. Uh, helps you double and triple spell to get your Arclight Phoenixes back. Um, Anamorphos and Faithless Looting are here to cycle through your deck, as is Light Up the Stage. Um, Anamorphos is a free spell to allow you to cycle into more action, you know, reduce the amount of lands you have to play, etc. Faithless Looting helps you cycle through your dead draws, either, you know, your gut shots, your Arclight Phoenixes and such. Um, Bedlam Revelers in the early game, if the game is going to be decided before Bedlam Reveler would be relevant. You know, your creatures, if you're beyond the point where creatures are relevant, um, allows you to cycle into fresh cards. Lay up the stage when you're consistently dealing damage to your opponent is basically a draw two for one. Um, sometimes you're going to hit an Arclight Phoenix or a Bedlam Reveler and can't cast it. Uh, that's sometimes the hit you take. Uh, Screw of the Critics gives you another bolt effect to bring you up to a full 12 Lightning Bolt effects. In addition to the four gut shots, and you're not playing garbage like Fiery Temper. Um, beyond that, Arclight Phoenix gives you a little bit of resiliency. Um, obviously, the ability to get back for, you know, two or three spells. Um, Bedlam Reveler allows you to reload a little bit in the late game, so two of is firmly pretty fine. Uh, this does make you a little bit more vulnerable to Graveyard Heat, but you are an aggressive burn deck, so if your opponent's bring in, like, surgical extractions against your, you know... Monastery Swiss Beer, Soul Scar Mage, Double Lightning Bolt draws, they may not fare too well. Uh, sideboarding, just a friendly reminder before we do that, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing, and don't forget to leave constructive comments down below. Now that that plug's over, uh, Surgical Extractions are for the Graveyard decks, things like Storm, things like Living End, things like uh, Dredge which all can present their own challenges. Rending Volley is pretty much for the Is It Mirror Match. You can hit things like, uh, you know, Thing in the Ice, Crackling Drake, Terramander. Could also, I guess, conceivably come in against Storm. Gives you another one-minute interaction against the uh, Barals and um, Electromancers. A Braid is good when you need a three-mana shock effect. Um, don't underestimate a Braid, even against things like Tarmogoyf, if you have something like Soulscar Mage in hand. Uh, Blood Moon comes in to kind of mana screw various different decks, can come in as an extra weapon against Control decks, coming against Tron, coming against Amulet Titan, um, comes in against the, potentially the Greedy Three Cardinal mana bases like Jund and such. So keep an eye out for Blood Moon. Um, you know, sometimes it can steal you matches where otherwise you're struggling. You know, it could even kind of hit the humans player if they're able to, you're able to catch them without a uh, Aether Vial, and yes, Humans is making a little bit of resurgence down that KCI is going away. And Dragon's Claw is pretty much for the Arclight Phoenix and Burn Mirror. Um, obviously, without access to white, you can't bring in things like uh, Core Firewalker, can't bring in things like Oriok Champion. Um, without black, you can't bring in things like Collective Brutality. So Dragon's Claw is basically the best thing you have in racing situations. So that said, let's hop into match number two. Um, this deck... Previously in the past, I've not been too too impressed with the red deck. The red deck has the red version has faster clock, but seemed to run out of steam a little bit better, a little bit more quickly than the is it variety. Sometimes you'd flood out and have nothing to do. Maybe that was missequencing sometimes on my part. But the goal is to learn, to play, to adapt, and this is certainly a deck that impressed. Um, I still haven't fact checked. But someone in the comments said this deck went 15-0 in the team open. Um, not this pa not this past weekend, but the previous weekend. That's why they requested that I play it. So, once again, this deck is kind of the 
the bridge between the burn decks of the format and the arc light phoenix decks of the format. Um, and the clean clean mono red mana base allows you to play Blood Moon without uh, many repercussions. So beyond the play is most excellent. This hand is pretty good. Would love like a faithless looting or something, but otherwise I think we're very happy with this hand. I think it's just like faith It's just like Mountain <coughs> Swift Spear. The next turn we go like Soul Scar Mage and stuff. <coughs> Maybe we'll hit a bolt here or something. Birds. Love to see maybe even a gut shot here. Light up the stage, huh? Once again, gut shot would be excellent off of that card as well. Unlikely they'll block here, so we'll just get take our two damage here. Play light up the stage. Mountain. Hmm. So I could play light up the stage trying to hit. So 2 out of 50 versus just playing Soul Scar Mage and go. Or sorry, 4 out of 50 here. And we are rewarded. <laughs> Did miss a lot of extra damage here, but in the end I just wanted to get to Sesame Street. Yeah, I just wanted to get to... Hmm... That's a lot of can tripping. <laughs> Ideally looking for a faithless looting here. So go ahead and play the final one. Another arc like Phoenix here kinda sucks. a lot of damage. <laughs> Hopefully these Arc Light Phoenixes of the next couple turns will be able to close the game out too. Let's see if they have like Knight of the Reliquary or something here. Punt would be six if we didn't blow them up here. Corsair of Crufix. Oh, overgrowth. Alright. See what our opponent has here. So they have access to three, four, five, six mana. So, mono green or some type of devotion strategy it looks like. I don't think our blood moons obviously aren't very good. Surgicals, eh. Running volley. 
I'm gonna just bring in the abrades and go down. Hmm. Maybe the Bedlam Revelers. Just go down a Reveler and a. Down a reveler. Could bring in Graveyard Hate potentially. Um, we got a little bit lucky that we were able to hit their mana dorks. <laughs> Leaving in Gutshot for that reason, because they probably have six to eight mana dorks in addition to their. Um, yeah, Sin's fine. Faithless Looting, obviously, a little bit, you know, in case we flood out. <laughs> probably have a mana dork on one, which. Yeah, I'd love to draw a gut shot or something here. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> Give them a chance to block. Predictably, they decline. It's one of the advantages of playing four gut shots in your deck. Birds. Hmm. See if they block here, probably not. Do this. Spike, huh? Their opponent can't do too terribly much with the mana. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure what devotion stuff they're playing. They're obviously a Naya build, so I would guess Tooth and Nail. With like Xenogod and Emrakul as a closing out feature. Yep, hopefully they don't have another land here. Lead on Faithless Looting here. Some damage. Don't think it's quite lethal. Just the opportunity to bring back the Phoenix there, which might have been a mistake. Because <clears throat> I cast the Swiss Spear instead of the Screw the Critics there. Anger of the Gods, possibly? Sweltering Sun, sure. So, Metamorphose, Gut Shot, Skewer the Critics, Bird comes back, GG. 
easy to O, so. Despite the missequencing as far as getting my Phoenix back, may not have been a terrible thing, because did get in the extra damage with the Swift Spear, although I think all, all roads led to Rome, though I think casting this Gear of the Critics over the Swift Spear might have been correct. I'm not quite sure on the damage output there, but we might have actually benefited from my screw up there. But, uh, pretty sweet, Manamorphos, allowing us to get the Phoenix back, got to kill our opponent, so, pretty easy 2-0, or 4 0 so far. So this has been match number two of episode three with Arclight Phoenix, the spoon of the mono-red variety.